<clears throat> How does this sound? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all types of booze are created equal, that they are endowed by the Bardad with certain imbibable rights. Among these are lime mixers and the pursuit of the perfect cocktail. I like it. Here, here, here. Hey, Bardad folks, stay tuned to learn about the cocktail that founded America. So pull up a tankard and we'll chat about it. It's the Bar Dad. Hey folks, welcome back to another very special episode of Drinking History with our resident Bar Dad nerd historian, Don Campbell. Yay. Hello. All right. So by the way, I want to point out this wonderful uh, attire that we have on today, uh, courtesy of Don's lovely bride, Kate who is a professional theatrical seamstress. She, she plays one on television. She, she <laughs> looks good. Yep. Looks good. It's slimming, don't you think? Uh, but anyway, we are here. <laughs> we are here to talk about the most popular drink during the colonial era, right? So yep. Donnie and I were talking about what is the next episode we want to do on uh, drinking history. And he's like, well, you know, there was this like really, really popular drink during the 1700s and, and uh, everybody served it. Everybody's grandmother had a recipe for it. Every tavern had a different recipe for it. Yep. And I said, let's do it, right? Right. And uh, in, in doing some research, it's kind of like, like the old fashioned, right? It's a popular cocktail, but everywhere you go, somebody makes it a little different. But the, but the guts of an old fashioned are the same. Right. So this is, so we're talking about a colonial flip. Okay. And the flip... Flip. 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 So flips got actually, you start seeing flips showing up in the late 1600s. And then by that 1770s, it, it is the number one drink. Everybody was drinking flips. Every tavern it was, had flips. It was the hotness. It was the hotness. And a flip basically is a, a hot ale drink with egg and usually rum at the time so that so it was just it's rum and a sweetener molasses sugar or something uh, egg and and then a, a it's a hot drink normally so you would have a, you would have a hot pot of ale on the fire or you could heat it up and we'll talk about ways that you could heat it up separately that sounds delicious it really is surprisingly hot, hot beer rum Egg and molasses. molasses. Yep. The sacrifices I go through <laughs> for you people out there in the audience. So we're gonna we're gonna make a flip. We are going to make a flip, right? And the action that the, the name of flip, right, comes from the action of you have to mix it because you've got the egg and you need to get you want to get frothy. So you would actually take it and pour it from vessel to vessel, and that's the flip action, and that's where it gets its name. I'm still okay. stuck on the raw egg. Yeah. In it. So. You know, we've it's like, talked it's like, it's about like a liquid quiche, right? So, if you remember from our at, from our episode back at Christmas that time, that was funny, by the way. <laughs> just he just kept going, like I always just keep going. It's <laughs> easier to just move on. So, if you remember from our episode where we did George Washington's eggnog, that was fantastic. Right? I'm still recovering. From I think that. you can click somewhere up here and see that. Oh, thank you for that. Got that, welcome. Caroline? Hit that hit that link. Okay, there you go. Um, you can uh, a, a raw egg. In a drink, uh, you don't have to worry about it too much because the uh, liquor, the alcohol in the liquor, will cook the egg and make it safer for you. So, so Flip was created by the famous colonial uh, 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 Minuteman, Sam. It was from Italy. Anella. Sam Anella? Yes, yes, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I walked right into that <laughs> one too. <laughs> Stick with us and we will make you a Flip. Happy flipping fork. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute, this is my show. I'll tell you when you come back and when you don't. But then you said, happy flipping fork. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, what am I now? I'm a tickler. You're a tickler. What am I now? Ho, 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 ho. Uh, Dr. Campbell here has uh, all the stuff that's going to go into our flip today. So you want to take our folks through? 
what we got going on? Right. So what's, the first thing we're going to start off with is you're going to use a, actually I was moving that so that you could pick that up. There we go. Um, I failed Vanna school. <laughs> <laughs> so you need an ale. Uh, so a, a good porter or a stout will work. Uh, I chose Boddington's Tavern Ale because actually the recipe for Boddington's has unchanged since 1770. So this is a authentic flavor. Actually, and, this was canned tasting. in 1773. It, it might be a little funky when we open it up. It'll work. It's so. all about a realism and authenticity on drinking history. So we need 16 ounces of a good ale or a porter. And you're going to pour that into that saucepan right there. Right now? You can do that right now. Oh, you need a saucepan. You do need a saucepan because okay. we're going to heat up this ale. And we're going to do it. We're going to be using a modern technique because it's a little quicker and a little less messy. Um, I thought the whole purpose of beer is to not have warm beer. That depends on where you are. Because in if you were in Europe, it was all warm beer. Okay. And at the time, in the in colonial times, there was no refrigeration. So you had at least room temperature anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have 16 ounces yep. of ale. Yep. All right. And then in here. Oh. You're going to do three ounces. Can, okay, we can do that. Was there like a colonial like like cheers or whatever? Did they did they? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a historical letdown, but that's okay. So <laughs> okay, well, let's go okay. ahead. Three ounces of rum, and you want to use a spiced rum. Rum we purchased at Total Wine. Okay, so we okay. do three ounces of three ounces of rum, and a spiced rum again. If we're trying to get that that flavor profile, a spiced rum is what. Point out three ounces on that. I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing my spectacles, so. Oh, three. I think I think that's a three. I think that's a. Three. It'll work. It's close enough. So we're going to go with the spiced well, rum. Well, you can never have too much rum. The, the same flavor profile that, you're, that we're going for in that colonial area. Look at that deep, rich color of the $10 bottle of spiced rum. Okay, this goes it's, in here? Since you're mixing it with, with uh, ale, you probably don't have to worry oh, that's about true. the... Okay. There. Okay. Okay, so three okay. ounces. We need two tablespoons of molasses. This is a good dark molasses here. So probably about three of those spoons, maybe four. There you go. Four of them? Wow. It's not all coming off the spoon anyway. I think we've cached the molasses. So while you're doing that, let's talk about sweeteners. Yes. So the um, molasses was the cheapest way to get sugar at the time. And what the, in New, New England especially, which is kind of the area we're talking about here, you would take, they would take white fish and send it down to the sugar growers in Jamaica. Don't tell me molasses is made of whitefish. No, but they would pay for it oh. in molasses sent back up north, and that's what they would make the rum out of. Because, of course, molasses, or rum is just distilled molasses. Okay. Right. Because that would okay. be freaky. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then two eggs. Two okay. eggs? Two for, eggs. For one? For one. Well, so this is going to make two servings. Okay, two tanks. Three, so it's so only three ounces of rum for two for two. Three ounces of rum. That's kind of light on the rum. This is the bar dad episode, you know. Well, you're also doing sixteen ounces of ale, so you right. still have alcohol. Get this raw egg. Mm -hmm. Put that back in there. Yeah, we have done this before. We did do. You did this. You did this with twelve eggs I did. for the egg dog. So. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So that's all the that's all the pieces. We have our ale in the pot, which we're going to heat up, and then we've got three ounces of rum. Now you said there was an alternate method of heating. There was absolutely. And so what, how did a that? fireplace poker. All right. So a lot of times they would hate through the magic of Bar Dead Television. <laughs> you have a fireplace poker. So they would they would keep a fireplace poker heated up on the fire. Yeah. And. You would put all this together. You would do the flip. So the flip is actually going back and forth to mix the things. And then you would heat it by so sticking, sticking a fire, this in. Sticking a fireplace poker in there. And it would boil and froth the, the, the flip. And there you go. 
I would tell you that the director of Bardad Risk Management, a.k.a. my wife, says I'm not sticking the hot poker in the fireplace to, to get it heated up to use it. So. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so now okay. we need to put the lid on. Put the lid on, shake that up. We want to mix that up good. So Sounds right now, delicious. So right now you're just kind of incorporating that. We do need to heat the ale, add it to that, and we will have our flip. All right, we're back. Cheers. Where's my tankard? Wench, bring his tankard hither. Screw you. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back. We have hot beer here. Hot we ale, do. hot Boddington's ale. So I'm going to turn it over yep. to the chef. Let me move my tankard here. Okay. All right, now, do I need any protective, like, eyewear, anything as you flip this thing back and forth? We will hope not, and it always goes wrong at the flip, so... Here we go. Okay. All right. So the first thing you need to understand is when you move, when you're pouring hot into egg, you have to do a little bit at a time. Otherwise, you'll scramble the egg, and that's not what we're after here. Okay. So we're going to take just a little tiny bit, pour it in there, mix it around a bit, and then pour it back. And then we're now doing the flip. By mixing back and forth, you see we're getting a froth on the top of it now. Is that what that is? That's what that is. And we'll do it one more. And then we'll need our tankards to fill. That's a lovely color you've invented. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. All right. So. All right. Well, you definitely... do it here. Yeah, right on. Oh, it looks like what you took it right out of the mighty muddy Mississippi. Here we go. Oh, hey. Oh, oh. You also remember from our episode of the what the, was the what? number one spice that you put in every drink? Nutmeg. 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 So we're going to take our colonial nutmeg here from Winn Dixie, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to put a little nutmeg in the top there. Okay. A little nutmeg in the top here. So, we have uh, the most popular drink during the Revolutionary War period in yep. our history. Yeah. Uh, made with spiced rum, right. molasses, raw egg, and hot ale. And it's flipped back and forth. Right. So, which is where it gets its name. And here's Flip. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, well, hang on, hang on. Well, I gotta, I gotta sniff it first. Uh, the bar okay, we gotta do this again. Smell, Hold on a moment. <laughs> smell. Okay, so you definitely get the nutmeg and the molasses right off the bat, right? Because right. it, it smells, it smells like a warm Christmas hug. <laughs> it's what <laughs> it does. It's actually, it probably doesn't taste like a warm Christmas hug, but I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Okay. 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 You first. <laughs> Okay, so um, I am pleasantly surprised. Mm. Holy breeches, Batman. <laughs> um, so it it's weird. It, it almost has, um, it, it, if you took, if, if you spooned a little bit of molasses into a hot yoo-hoo. Okay. By the way, that's okay. the drink. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just make sure we got that clear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole different episode. Yes. But if you, you go to 7-Eleven, you get yourself a yoo-hoo. Because you do definitely you, have that chocolate. chocolate. There's a chocolate note to it. That's from the yeah, for the body For the right. body test. Mm-hmm. And then you whip a little bit of that black strap type molasses in it. So you get a, you get a really heavy molasses back end mm -hmm. on it. So if you're not a molasses fan, you know you maybe go with a sorghum. You could, or 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 sugar in the raw. Yeah, so you'll get a little less of that that tarish right. kind of. Molasses. Yeah, so this you get you very much get a a kind of a gingerbread vibe. 
from that molasses that comes out of there. Okay. Okay. Very, very. Okay. By the way, when you're wearing 40 ounces of 40 pounds of colonial attire, you're going to be sweat and flip in about 30 seconds because it does, it does, as they say, warm the cockles. Yeah. All right. We're back. We, uh, the audience, uh, we gave flip to the audience and they're, they're flipping, <laughs> having a good time. They're flipped out. So they're flipped out. But I, you know, it's really cool. We're drinking out of tankards. We're drinking like literally, legitimately a historical beverage here, dressed like a couple of uh, patriots, fathers of our country, like we're in the local tavern out yeah. there. Well, so we mentioned taverns earlier, right? We did. And we yeah. did. We talked about so every tavern had a flip, but taverns were very important in in the colonial area. And in fact, most people don't understand or don't realize that America started. In a tavern. America. America. Right? So, 1774, the House of Burgesses, which is the Virginia legislature, and they wanted to support Boston and Massachusetts in their efforts. I don't like what you're talking about. I don't like you supporting the other co colonies. And that meeting resulted in the formation of the first colonial Congress. And so we actually got our Congress started because of a meeting in a tavern. Mind the music and the step and let the girls be handy. We are going to uh, actually explore kind of a modern take on the flip. Right. Uh, and uh, it's good. we're going to do an iced venti latte flip with almond milk, light ice, and three pumps. Close, but not quite. Okay. All, All right. right. What do we got? So flips continue. And today, a flip refers to basically any drink that has a liquor a sweetener and an egg. Like really? Like cuz okay. you know the uh, you see a lot of egg white drinks these days. Exactly. So that has the roots in in a flip. In the flip, exactly. So this okay. is this one is as simple as it gets. We're going to use rum and this time we're going to use a good spice rum cuz that's the main flavor. We're going to use a rich simple syrup. So this is a a, a more heavy sweetener. This is two parts sugar to one part. Okay, cuz we talk about making your own simple syrup with syrup. Yeah, those two. Syrup. Mm -hmm. syrup. Which is one part water, one part white sugar, right. and you just double up the sugar, and it, it becomes a, a rich, double secret probation. Exactly, rich. Okay. a rich simple, right? Okay. And then one egg. For one egg, egg. And, okay. and ice, because this is going to be a chilled drink. Do we want to put the okay. ice in first? Or so, uh, you can do it any way you want. So, we're going to put it in the ice. There we go. Okay. Make sure that you leave room. We're going to do uh, two ounces of rum, or more, if we're splitting this. We'll let you, we'll let you call that one. There you go. And uh, one ounce of the simple syrup. That works. And one egg. God, just <laughs> okay. All right. So same thing as before. We're wanting to get that frothiness instead of instead of doing it by moving from pan to pan to pan. You're just going to shake that up. Go. Okay. <laughs> I, I think the egg is frozen. <laughs> that works. It's, it's enough to taste. We're good. Yeah. The jokes are flying through the mind, and I'm like, nope, nope, not that one. Nope, there's not enough beeps in the world to cover that one. Okay. Let me try to get a, let me shake this a little more and get a little more out. That one's okay. This is just, this is, this is a modern flip. It's just a simple, again, a, a liquor, a sweetener, and an egg. There you go. And we could put a little nutmeg on this if you like. On this episode of Animal Husbandry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. I do that. I do this for the art. All right. Just remind everybody we've got what is it again? This is rum. Rich, simple syrup, a sweetener, and an egg. Yeah. Try it.
try it. You're gonna like it. Okay, there's not much of a smell. Nope. Okay, get the, again, the jokes are going. <laughs> Remember. Okay, yes. The egg. Change my subject. The rum takes care of the egg. You don't have to worry about that. If you are sensitive to eggs, obviously, if you're sensitive yes. or have a hypersensitivity to egg, you want to be careful with this. But we should put like consumer warning in the bottom of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, this does not suck at all. At all. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? So this is a modern flip, a cold flip, right? And now same thing, you're gonna go to bars today and you will find flips and they will have their own versions of it made with different liquors or different sweeteners or maybe a flavored sweetener. You had that episode where you had the, the mint flavored simple syrup. Yes. So you could do that with like a bourbon. And the, the key is the egg. That's, that's the, I'm know. flummoxed. Yeah. This is good. Okay. We're going to take a break and we're going to give the audience a taste. We'll be right back. All right, folks. Welcome back. Hey, Dr. Campbell, again, head of the Bar Dad Historical Department. Thank you very much for your insights, your creativity, your, your lovely wife to provide me with this beautiful, beautiful, Seriously. what is it? Gaston? Uh, Jabot. Jabot. I don't know, some French shit. Okay, so um, so I, I, I always appreciate your third drinking history. Uh, the next one, we're going to be doing it on Pirate's Grog, what they what they drank on old pirate ships in the Caribbean back. Same same kind of era, late 1600s, early 1700s, it's a little earlier than the... We than might the repurpose some of these costumes, but we'll let you figure that out. Possibly. Uh, so, uh, Donnie, you are, uh, uh, the reason you are my director of the historical department is you are a big history nerd, and uh, you tell us a little bit of, about a website that you could go to to find out a little bit more about what we're talking about today. Right, so actually, we talked earlier about the the uh, the start of America there at the, at the Raleigh Tavern, and you can actually go to Colonial Williamsburg, so history.org, uh, but you can go to the Colonial Williamsburg right now, and you can go to the Capitol where the Burgesses met, and you can stand up and you can walk right down the street and go into the Raleigh Tavern and be right where these people walked, Jefferson, Washington, Madison, they were all there, they were all part of that, Randolph, all of them. I, I was there, and there's a plaque in the corner that says, this is where Thomas Jefferson threw up because he had too much flip. Yes, exactly. Right, right there. Right outside the back of the Raleigh. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's a registered historical place. <laughs> uh, Bardhead folks, hey, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe uh, when you're here on YouTube. Find us on Instagram, at the Bardad. And we'd love to hear from you if you have an idea of a drinking history episode that we can engage Dr. Campbell. Uh, please do so, and you can reach us at thebardad at gmail.com. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, keep your friends close and your raw eggs closer. Happy flipping forth! Woohoo! America. Keep your friends close and your scotch closer. It's the Bardad.